This is the biggest single Steam Deck update that we've ever seen. Not only was it a client update, but it was a simultaneous Steam OS update. So how about that Steam Deck, huh? It's quickly become the only way that I play video games. And keep in mind that I have four gaming PCs in my house and nearly every Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation console throughout their histories. And yet I spend at least an hour a day gaming on my Steam Deck, which when compared to my gaming habits in 2021 is up from an average of about zero hours a day. And I'm absolutely in love with this thing. And guess what? It's that time of the week again. It's Steam Deck news time. First up, EmuDeck has a new release and it's got some awesome improvements. First, this release offers official support for the first non-Steam Deck handheld, the Anbernic Win 600. Next, left analog sticks now mirror D-pad controls for 2D systems. SRM has recursive search now and can find games in subdirectories. SRM also remembers your custom artwork on subsequent scans. The CHD tool was renamed to Emudet Compression Tool and can now convert GC and Wii games to RVS with up to 65% compression. Power tools are now easier to install as well by activating dev mode automatically for you. There are now new bezels for Dreamcast, N64, PlayStation 1, and Atari 2600 fixes. There's now an HD texture pack folder, which is currently for messing with more systems coming soon. Plus they added fixes for certain other emulators as well. You can check out the latest release at emudeck.com or with the link in the description. Next, let's talk about Linux market share increasing again this month, at least according to the Steam Hardware Survey. Now the Steam Hardware Survey has shown uh, growth month over month for uh, the Linux OS market share on Steam. Now, it increased by 0.05%. And as we've talked about before, when we talk about numbers like this, a one hundredth of a percentage point for a player base as large as Steam has is still tens of thousands of folks. So if we drill down into the metrics, we can see that Arch Linux and Manjaro grew the most with Pop OS 22.04 and uh, SteamOS Hollow in third and fourth place respectively. And keep in mind that SteamOS Hollow is likely but not wholly comprised of Steam Deck owners. This is evident if we compare the Steam Deck's GPU numbers with the SteamOS Hollow install base. And we can see that about 0.04% of SteamOS Hollow users are not actually playing on the Steam Deck, which I think is quite interesting. But all of this just makes me wish that we had absolute numbers from Valve though, as percentage points and how much they changed are a coarse representation of the actual stats. Next up is Proton Experimental. Now there's a new build of Proton Experimental and it has some exciting changes. The most notable change is that Halo Infinite is now playable, though there are some minor graphical artifacts on the Steam Deck. But given the clip at which Valve updates Proton Experimental, they're sure to have this stuff sorted out in no time. What's really cool about this though, is that Valve has gotten Halo Infinite's online mode working as well. I've yet to play much of Halo Infinite myself, but it is great to see what was once one of my favorite franchises so well represented on the Steam Deck. Next up, let's talk about new regions. Now, the Steam Deck is coming to new regions across the globe. Later this year, according to Valve and their partner Komodo, the Steam Deck will be shipping to Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. Valve has vowed that this expansion is not going to negatively impact the shipments to existing reservations as the Komodo reservation queue is entirely separate from the North American and European queues. It's great to see that Valve is making good on their promise to ship to more regions. Now in anticipation of this news, Famitsu interviewed Valve's Greg Coomer and Eric Peterson. It's an interesting read, I had to use Google Translate to read it though, and in the article Famitsu asked about more Half-Life and Portal games, and Coomer spoke very favorably about new entries in both of those franchises, but had nothing concrete to announce, which is to be expected. So Insomniac Games on August 3rd reported that Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered has been ranked as verified on the Steam Deck. This is exciting as the idea of being able to play Spider-Man on PC was cool enough, but being able to play it on my Steam Deck, that's gonna be awesome. The game actually comes out on August 12th. If you wanna pre-order the game or want to buy it the day it comes out, use the link below to help out the show and buy it on Humble. Now, let me ask you a question though. Are you enjoying this video? Are you learning new and interesting things about Linux and the Steam Deck? Then why not like that smash button? And while you're at it, gently caress that subscribe button too. It lets the YouTube robots know that this video gave you some warm fuzzies. Now we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the summer. We're super close and with your help, we can do it. 
and thanks. Finally, let's talk about the SteamOS 3.3 update and the associated Steam Deck client update. There is a lot to unpack here, so let's talk about it. First, many of these features were known to us in beta channels. However, they've now finally landed in the stable channel and therefore will have a much greater impact on the wider Steam Deck population. First, three features that I've wanted for a while now. Achievements being added to the overlay page, guides being added to the overlay page, and a scheduled night mode feature which allows players to choose if and when they'd like night mode to automatically turn on. I even asked for these features in previous videos. Next, Valve added a few quality of life features. They added a button to clear enter text in the search bar, and they added adaptive brightness toggles once again. They also added a warning if the Steam Deck starts to overheat. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. First was Steam Input. They added missing deck buttons for gyro enable and button cord options. They added support for game bundled virtual menu icons in the in-game deck UI which means that games now can bundle uh, Steam input icons. That's really exciting. They also added miscellaneous performance improvements. For keyboards, they added support for simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, Japanese, and Korean keyboards. They're also refining these keyboards and they're asking for people to give their feedback in the forums. They also added initial support for iBus IME input uh, on the desktop for Chinese, Japanese, and Korean keyboards. They fixed desktop mode keyboard sometimes failing to show or dismiss. They fixed on-screen keyboards showing up under the Steam or Quick Access menu. They updated keyboard behavior for improved fast typing on trackpads and touchscreens. Pressing a key while holding another key will now commit the held key instead of waiting to release it first. And they fixed some touch styling issues with the virtual keyboard. Next up is performance and stability. They fixed some performance problems for users with many screenshots. They fixed several crashes related to managing screenshots. They fixed several crashes related to non-Steam shortcuts. They fixed some native Linux games not exiting when forced quit through Steam. They fixed Flatpak Chrome not closing properly when quit through Steam. They fixed a bug where some Flatpak applications like Edge wouldn't quit successfully. And they fixed a performance issue with some games when the backlight changes intensely. Next up, desktop mode. They updated Firefox to be installed as a flat pack rather than from the OS repositories to ensure timely updates. First time launches of Firefox from the desktop will now prompt for installation via the Discover Software Center, which will handle updates as they are published. Updated network connections created and edited on the desktop will now default to system-wide, ensuring that they're available in gaming mode. They added vGUI 2 Classic Plasma Desktop theme, so now your desktop can look like the classic Steam client. They resized the virtual keyboard and desktop mode to the appropriate dimensions, and they added support for the Canva Obsidian and Canva Dragon arcade sticks in desktop mode. Next up we have dock mode. They added an option to scale the Steam Deck user interface for external displays. They added a toggle for automatic scaling of the Steam Deck user interface for external displays. They added the ability to adjust image display settings for external displays that have overscan issues. They fixed the panel staying off when disconnecting from dock mode shortly after resuming from sleep. And one of the most annoying issues that they fixed is they changed it so that now the, uh, the Steam Deck screen will actually fully shut off instead of having the backlight stay on while it's docked. Next up is audio and Bluetooth. They fixed Bluetooth profile selection not being saved when switching away from desktop mode. They fixed echo cancellation CPU overhead when the microphone isn't being used, improving power usage in idle or near idle scenarios. They fixed multi-channel audio on external displays. They fixed audio out on some capture cards. They fixed some instances of corrupt audio after resuming from sleep, which I've encountered many times. And finally, they fixed audio output with some 32-bit games that used ALSA. Next up is drivers and firmware. Now, they updated the graphics driver uh, with compatibility and performance fixes, which is a welcome change. They updated wireless drivers with fixes for Wi-Fi disconnection issues on 5 GHz networks. And finally, they updated controller firmware utilities to support future controller hardware revisions. Then the next day, Valve pushed another update that resolved a stuttering issue introduced in the previous patch. 
Well, that's it for news this week. This was the biggest update to the Steam Deck we've ever seen, and hopefully you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment and let me know what you thought was most exciting about the Steam Deck news this week. I would love to hear from you. I think that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you in the next one.